Thus far, we have looked at various kinds of active systems. Um, now, uh, before we end the lecture, let's just spend a few minutes on looking at uh, standby systems. So the general layout of the standby architecture is something like this, uh, that uh, there are k sockets numbered from 1 through k that you see on the very left, uh, the vertical axis, and the x-axis is the time axis. And there we indicate all the different times uh, in which spares are introduced. So the system is formed of k main units, and they're all identical, uh, and n minus k spares. Uh, so uh, let's start the clock. So let i1 be the first element to fail. Uh, the time to the first failure is the smallest one. So the smallest of uh, all the ti's uh, is that first failure. That is the element identified as i1. And we note uh, that uh, quantity tm superscript 1 uh, in parentheses. So that is the, the first time that a spare has been introduced. And what we do is we replace that element, we reinitialize the clock uh, for all the surviving elements and reload the system. So this is what I do. This is what we do. Uh, TI superscript 1 is now uh, the clock after the first failure. So that is reset by, uh, it's just relocated uh, with TM1 subtracted for all of them except the element that failed. And the element that failed, uh, we just uh, give the, uh, we just assign the first spares lifetime, TS superscript 1, to that uh, new element that goes into the same socket I1. So uh, this continues. Uh, let I2 be the second element uh, to fail. And the time to the second failure is uh, Tm superscript 2. And that's how we identified I2, the second element uh, to fail. And then we replace that with a spare uh, with um, life TS superscript 2. And we reset and reinitialize and put the system back online again. And so that gives me TI superscript 2 for all of them except I2 now which failed. It's now the life of the second spare. And this continues. So what we have done so far is we have uh, obtained TM superscript 1. We have obtained TM superscript 2. We have uh, put in two spares uh, and then uh, we get the third element so it's I3 and we can generalize this process and that's what you see uh, at the uh, bottom right corner is uh, for all j from 1 to n minus k plus 1 uh, we find the tms and we keep replacing until we are we all the spares are exhausted so the system time to failure in this scheme is the sum of all the TMs that we have identified. Uh, we could now just look at uh, a very simple standby parallel system uh, with one active uh, and uh, n minus one standby elements. So uh, the system time to failure is simply the sum of all the individual times to failure uh, because once the first one fails, the second one takes over. So all the TTFs are added to get the system time to failure. Whether the Ts are dependent or not doesn't matter. Uh, the mean is the sum uh, of the means. The mean, uh, the MTTF for the system is the sum of the individual uh, MTTFs. Uh, now, again, uh, 
whether the T's are dependent or not, the individual T's, uh, the system uh, time to failure will always be better than we if we had put all of them active together. So by which uh, I mean that uh, this uh, max Ti, uh, which would be the uh, time to failure had it been an active system, that is always less than the sum of all the Ts because uh, the max Ti is just one component in that sum. So uh, if we can afford it, if there is no overloading, uh, if there is no overstressing of elements, obviously it makes sense to uh, not put all of them into service if we have one or more spares. Uh, let the first one fail, then the second one can take over and so on until we are out of all the n minus 1 spares. Obviously, uh, what you see there is we have to be careful about switching failure. Now, uh, let's look at this just uh, with uh, a two element parallel system uh, and uh, we will, uh, we will uh, look at T1 and T2. The system reliability is now just T1 plus T2 greater than little t, uh, the probability of that. And we can employ uh, the, uh, the theorem of total probability as we have been doing a lot. And uh, that gives me the integral, which is integration from 0 to t of R2, uh, t minus t1 times the density of t1. So that is the contribution uh, of the second element. So that's the contribution of the spare. The first one is R1t. And it's easy to show, uh, and which you see the proof in the bottom of the screen, is that uh, that the system reliability in this standby situation without any switching failure, of course, is always going to be better than the, uh, the active uh, system consisting of those same two elements. Uh, we can bring in switching failure now. Uh, so uh, now we have a switch, a switching device, uh, which uh, at first is connected to M, the main unit, and B is the backup unit. Uh, so uh, once M fails, the switch uh, brings the unit B online and hopefully this switching over is seamless but uh, switches do fail switches do age so the longer the switch waits maybe an aging happens so there is a possibility that the switch may not work as intended so if the first element fails if the main unit fails the backup never comes online so that is a consideration that we have to uh, keep in mind and uh, that might change the whole picture. Uh, that might actually uh, uh, be an argument in favor of not having a standby parallel system but having both of them active. And that's why you see the, uh, the RCST augmented by RSD, the reliability of the switching device, which in a more complicated situation could also be a function of time but here it is not, so it's out of the integral. Uh, so you see uh, the way that it uh, modifies the reliability due to the backup and the Rm or R1 in the upper uh, block uh, is the main unit's reliability. So uh, if there is a switching failure issue, uh, there's no telling which configuration would be better. Uh, let's solve one example uh, to end this and uh, we have looked at this before uh, when we did uh, solve some problem in system reliability. Uh, so here we are back to the same situation but now there is an explicit time dependence in some of this uh, units failure. So the, the uh, text in red indicates to that uh, the generator uh, has a TTF, exponential TTF with mean 10 years, uh, and then it has a switching failure probability of 10% as before, 
uh, the census are now exponential uh, with mean three years and uh, so uh, and, and the uh, water system does not have any time dependence uh, but the question now is that uh, when should inspection be scheduled uh, if we don't allow the reliability to fall below 90 percent so let's uh, lay out the outline for the solution uh, we'll just give the hint and then uh, if you're interested you might complete the problem so let us say t is one year uh, so and let's see if an inspection at one year will be adequate or not so uh, the generator has an exponential distribution as we said so its reliability uh, is can be found um, uh, roughly 0 0.9 so the power system has a reliability of 0 0.96 uh, the sensor system uh, has two sensors uh, each with an exponential uh, TTF uh, with mean three years so the sensor system reliability is 0 0.92 at the end of one year and the water system has no change uh, its reliability is 0 0.95 as we had done uh, in the previous reincarnation of this example so then because they're all independent the reliability of this system is the product and that's 0.84 clearly uh, it's less than 90 percent so one year is not enough uh, we need to schedule uh, the inspection earlier how early uh, that you can solve uh, the most straightforward method is just to solve it iteratively uh, and then um, you can select uh, the optimal time to schedule the inspection